Have you ever stood at the beach, stared at the ocean, and thought, there's literally a planet's worth of water here, so why are we running out? It's a question more people are asking as droughts grow, populations rise, and fresh water becomes one of the world's most valuable resources. And that brings us to a fascinating piece of technology that turns ocean water into drinking water, desalination. Today, we're diving deep, pun intended, into how desalination works, why it matters, what challenges it comes with, and how it might shape the future of clean water, right here on History of Simple Things. Most of us turn on the faucet without thinking twice. But behind that simple action is a complex global issue. About 97% of Earth's water is salty, completely undrinkable. Only a tiny fraction is fresh, and an even smaller amount is accessible. So the logic becomes obvious. If we can remove salt from seawater, we could make nearly unlimited drinking water. It sounds like magic, but the science behind it is very real and surprisingly elegant. Desalination is the process of taking salty water, usually from the ocean, and removing the salt and impurities so it becomes safe to drink. While it sounds simple, the methods used today rely on advanced engineering. There are two main approaches. First, thermal desalination basically heating water until it evaporates, then collecting the pure vapor. Second, membrane desalination, forcing salty water through extremely fine filters using pressure. Both achieve the same goal, but they use very different strategies. Thermal desalination is the oldest method, inspired by something we all learned as kids. If you boil water, the steam that rises is pure. Salt doesn't evaporate, so if you capture the steam and turn it back into liquid, you get fresh water. That's the entire concept, but at industrial scale. How it works. Seawater is pumped into a large chamber. The water is heated until it vaporizes. The steam rises, leaving the salt behind. The vapor is cooled and condensed back into liquid fresh water. The leftover salty brine is removed. This method is commonly used in places with abundant energy resources, like the Middle East. Many thermal plants even use waste heat from power stations to make the process more efficient. Thermal desalination laid the foundation for modern water purification. But today, a more efficient method is taking the spotlight. Reverse osmosis. Reverse osmosis, or RO, powers most large desalination plants, from California to Israel and even Singapore. Unlike older methods that rely on heat, RO uses pressure to extract pure water from seawater. So how does it work? Imagine a membrane so fine that water molecules can pass through, but salt molecules cannot. These membranes are thin, flexible sheets full of microscopic pores. Now picture forcing seawater against this membrane at extremely high pressure. The water squeezes through the tiny pores, leaving the salt and other minerals behind. Here's the process, step by step. Intake. Seawater is collected, often through offshore pipes or coastal wells. Pre-treatment sand, algae, and small particles are filtered out to protect the delicate membranes. High pressure pumping powerful pumps push the water into the membrane system. Filtration. Fresh water passes through the membranes while salts and minerals stay behind. Post-treatment. The purified water is remineralized to ensure it's safe and pleasant to drink. Brine disposal. The concentrated leftover water is carefully handled to prevent harm to marine life. Reverse osmosis is efficient, effective, and becoming more affordable as technology improves, making it the go-to choice for desalination worldwide. People often ask whether desalinated water is safe to drink. The answer is yes, 
but it requires proper post-treatment. RO water is extremely pure, almost too pure. Water that lacks minerals can taste flat and may even corrode pipes. So desalination plants add minerals back, like calcium and magnesium, to make the water stable and healthy. Israel is one of the world leaders in desalination. About 70-80% of its drinking water comes from the sea. Their plants use advanced RO, making the Mediterranean a renewable water source. Saudi Arabia relies heavily on thermal desalination, supplying millions of people daily. It's also investing in solar-powered RO to cut energy costs. California uses desalination to supplement water supplies during droughts. The Carlsbad desalination plant, for example, produces around 50 million gallons of drinking water per day. Singapore operates some of the world's most efficient RO plants, blending desalinated water with recycled and rainwater systems. These examples show desalination isn't science fiction. It's a tool many regions rely on every day. Scientists and engineers are constantly pushing technology forward, shaping a future once thought impossible. Imagine graphene membranes filtering water with unprecedented efficiency, vast solar-powered desalination farms operating with near-zero emissions, low-pressure systems that dramatically reduce energy consumption, portable desalination units bringing clean water to disaster zones and remote communities, even advanced systems that recover valuable minerals from brine instead of letting them go to waste. With these innovations, desalination is no longer just a solution. It becomes cleaner, cheaper, and truly sustainable for generations to come. Desalination isn't the perfect answer to the world's water problems, but it's a powerful one. It turns something we have too much of, salt water, into something we desperately need, fresh, clean drinking water. As technology improves, desalination may shift from a backup plan to a mainstream solution. Imagine a world where coastal cities no longer fear droughts, where clean water isn't a privilege but a guaranteed resource. That's the promise of desalination. If we continue investing in sustainable energy, smarter filtration systems, and environmentally responsible practices, the ocean could truly become the world's most dependable water reservoir. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.